Why bother? Must be another bill. Oh, but this looks different from the others. I wonder who is it from? Hmm? A wedding invitation? From... Eh? Seriously? What? Let's go to Japan. So I'm at the airport in Frankfurt now, where I'm doing the, the layover to the next to catch the next flight to Tokyo. In Malta, we do not have a direct flight to Japan, so we have to transfer. The first flight to Frankfurt was quite smooth. It was a little bit over two hours, but it was quite comfortable. No delays, everything went well. And now I'm waiting to board the the main flight which is around 12 hours to Tokyo I hate long flights hopefully I'll get a few hours of sleep maybe I'll I'll do some edit because I don't think I will have internet throughout the whole flight slowly the the gate is starting to to get populated uh, the first flight was full we'll see about this one after a few moments of excitement and checking in, I finally stepped foot on the airplane that will take me back to the land of the rising sun. The feeling is indescribable, knowing that in just a few hours, I'll be back in the place that feels like a second home to me. Due to the delay, some plans had to be reshuffled. Instead of hitting the ground running, I found myself having a spontaneous dinner with Yuki's family. It turned out to be a delightful evening filled with warmth and connection. Now, with a full heart and a satisfied stomach, I'm heading back to my temporary home to catch up on some much needed sleep. Good morning. So, the time is a bit after 6.30 in the morning. It is the first morning after I arrived. Um, the plane was a bit delayed. We were supposed to land, I forgot what time, but the, the plane took another hour. One interesting thing about the, the airport in Tokyo is that there's an arrival every few seconds. And since we were a bit late, our plane was circling around and uh, in order to, to be in line. And it took around an hour. As a result of that, we landed a bit late. We went to have dinner and then I came here, which by the way, this is a Japanese house and I will be staying here in Tokyo for most of my stay. This morning I will explore around the area. It's my first time in this particular area in Tokyo. There's a nice temple which I will go and visit later on, grab something for breakfast on the way. So let's go. The next morning in Tokyo, the battle with my inner body clock commenced as I wrestled with the urge to stay cocooned in the warmth of my bed. But Japan had its way of calling me out and I eventually succumbed to the charm of the new day. Stepping out, I found myself in the tranquil streets of this quiet Tokyo neighborhood. As I wandered through these peaceful streets, I stumbled upon a rather large temple a place I had never visited before. Upon entering the temple grounds, I observed the customary ritual, the cleansing of hands and rinsing of the mouth, a symbolic gesture that sets the tone for the serenity within. 
it's moments like these that make me appreciate the depth of Japanese traditions. So apparently this is a very good bakery and I'm gonna get my breakfast from here. So see you in a bit. I managed to snag some incredibly appetizing looking bread from a local bakery here in this area. If you're keen on a detailed review, drop a comment below and I'll make sure to give you the full scoop. Stay tuned for a mouthwatering exploration. After savoring a delightful breakfast, the anticipation reached its peak as I headed to Shibuya, the bustling heart of Tokyo, and some might say, the world. It's hard to believe it's been five years since I last set foot in this vibrant city, but the energy of Shibuya welcomed me just as I remembered. I strolled through the lively streets and made my way to Parko, a popular shopping haven filled with game-related shops. The excitement was palpable, as I explored the latest in gaming culture. But the real treat awaited at a cozy cafe with Yuki. We indulged in matcha desserts adorned with mochi and sweet red beans, a true delight for the senses. As you can probably tell, they were absolutely fantastic. After an amazing time in Shibuya, I made my way back to my temporary home. The evening unfolded with a heartwarming dinner shared with Yuki's family. Uh, today is my second day in Japan. I just had breakfast and soon I'm going to Shinjuku to do some shopping. I've got a long day ahead. I'm planning to, to buy a few stuff, but I also would like to see the area in uh, in Shinjuku, it's been five years since I've been there last and I, I'm looking forward to it. There's something I would like to talk about. This is a Japanese cancer kit. It's a self kit, as you see. Uh, Yuki ordered it for me and you receive it at home. You open the kit and everything is self-explained. Basically, you you take a, a urine sample and you put it in this thing and you send it for testing. You open it. There's all the instructions you need here, uh, which I'm not going in detail because this is not the scope of the video. And then you have this one, okay? You basically submit the sample in this vial. The test is basically submitted to a lab and there's a particular worm or insect which uh, is attracted to the cancer cells. And uh, with this test, you, you will determine if, if you have or are likely to have cancer. The test is not perfect. It means it's not 100% accurate, but it is very close. Um, I was reading and uh, online and the rate of accuracy is around 95%. So it's quite close and it's not invasive at all. This test only exists in Japan. Um, I think the world would benefit more if these tests are available all over the world uh, because prevention is better than cure and of course invasive surgery is not healthy either. So I'm going to do this test, um, the results won't be in for another month, it means I I will be back in Malta before I will get the result. Uh, but yeah, health is important, so I'm, I'm taking care of that. After navigating the intricacies of a self-kit test without causing too much chaos, it was time to step into the vibrant chaos of Shinjuku after a long wait. 
The city was just as unbelievable and loud as I remembered, with Godzilla towering over buildings and pachinko places buzzing with activity. But my focus was on a different kind of satisfaction, an authentic serving of pork broth at a ramen shop, as my stomach craved for this Japanese culinary masterpiece. Now, for those unfamiliar, ramen is a Japanese noodle soup dish consisting of Chinese-style wheat noodles served in a meat or fish-based broth, often flavored with soy sauce or miso, and topped with ingredients like sliced pork, dried seaweed, and green onions. It's a comforting bowl of goodness that hits all the right spots. Satisfied from the ramen experience, I venture to a place that holds a special spot in my heart. Square Enix. The home of Dragon Quest, Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts. This company has been the architect of some of the best games and stories, at least in my childhood. Visiting Square Enix always takes me back to my younger days, where weekends were spent trying to master a game. It was a different time, less worrying and more fun. These games played a significant role in shaping who I am today, and revisiting this place allows me to connect with my younger self and find a sense of peace. And that concludes the first vlog episode of my Japan trip. If you enjoyed the adventure so far, stay tuned, hit the like button and turn on the notification bell to catch the next episodes as soon as they are out. This is just the beginning, with plenty more to see and explore. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. Looking forward to the next one and until then, keep that geek spirit alive.